you know what happens when you have a two-story section of a roof mm -hmm. and maybe like a garage or something that's one story and they and they butt right up against one another mm -hmm. on the house? Yeah. What do you get? You've got an overhang section. Do you? Yes. Overhangs. And that's what we <laughs> want to talk about today. Drawing overhangs accurately in roof snap uh, can, can greatly increase your accuracy when measuring the roof. Uh, you don't want to miss out on the surface area, uh, especially when the roof has very large overhangs. Mm -hmm. We have a project here uh, that we brought up, and we've drawn in most of the lines already. Uh, this section that we're looking at here is all two-story, yep. and a slightly lower elevation that comes down the side here, mm -hmm. and then a one-story section over here on the right that sort of wraps around the front as well. Gotcha. So let's go ahead and address this. First, I kind of want to take a look at what's going to happen uh, as the dormer eave mm -hmm. starts going up the rake yeah. and uh, what happens as it climbs up where that step wall is going to be. It's easiest to start up here at the top, and if we know the length of the overhang, typically around a foot, mm -hmm. we could just draw that in first. So I'm going to come to one foot if it lets me. Nighty Moon gets a little jumpy, huh? Oh, I got it. I got it at a foot. <laughs> and then we're going to come down the step wall. Now, it's not going to come all the way down here to the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 20 feet exactly, so we're going to come back to 19 feet. Just assume a one-foot overhang. So we're going to let 90 mode line itself up perfectly uh, with that eave down there at the bottom so that when we tap and draw, we get that rake perfectly straight all the way down. Wonderful. All right, now we're going to go ahead and just pause on that area for now and come over here and draw in the lines as well. So we've got the rake that comes down here and it's going to turn and make an eave. And I don't want to stop right here at 10-4. Again, I want to go one foot past to 11-4. Right. And let's go ahead and move the image a little bit, keep things centered. Go back to draw mode and I can bring the ridge over uh, and it's going to line up. 90 mode's going to plot and see that it's perfectly straight over from that. So I don't have to worry about going one foot past once I already have a line that represents a foot past. Wonderful. All right, so we'll come down here and we've got the uh, uh, excuse me the step wall down the other side and it's going to come to 6 8 if we go all the way so let's come back a foot to 5 8 and then we'll move the image over as we go all right so let's take care of this rake it's going to come up and it's going to stop at so we have 5 6 so we're going to go one foot past to 6 6 and then we've got a, a wall flashing apron wall all the way across there we go. Perfect. And what does that look like um, with regard to facets and how that should look in RoofSnap? Yeah, so uh, our, uh, you of those who are our customers who've been using RoofSnap, um, you know when you hit facets, areas that have been drawn correctly will be shaded in blue. Perfect. Those overhangs, though, that, that we really want you to, uh, to think about accounting for, you're going to know that you've drawn them correctly because they're going to have a double shading. Two layers of blue make dark blue. And Jason, what about the labels uh, at those overhangs? Certainly. So we want to make sure not only to account for all of these rakes. So for example, we have the outside of that second story. The gray color here represents our rakes. Uh, but step is going to be dark blue. And where the step makes a little turn and connects there, that little pocket at the top of a step wall, mm -hmm. typically just label that as wall. Perfect. Now I'll come down and do a couple more of the sections here. Let's do this front porch area. So we have the rakes of the main gable that comes out. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a rake here. And we'll have a few eaves. So let's grab that eave, that eave. Uh, that was a rake that I just tapped on there by mistake. So let's go back and get that as a rake and a rake. And let's hit the valleys while we're here. And the ridge in the center. And that transition wall there, that's where the porch goes in and just butts right up into the siding. Mm. It's a horizontal plane. Gotcha. And that's going to be your wall where you have, some people call it head wall. Some people call it the place where apron flashing goes. Mm -hmm. uh, a few different terminologies for that. And then as you come over here to the side, we've got another little piece of eave here on the second story. And we have uh, the step flashing, which comes up to that ridge and then back down the other side. And there's the ridge that splits where it changes. 
two rakes on the left and right, one rake up here, another rake that goes down the back side, and the ridge across the top. Shall we finish labeling everything Might up while we're here? Well. All Come right. On. So let's go back out to maximum zoom. All the lines that are very close together that we had to zoom in for mm -hmm. uh, are pretty much done. We've got one little line I might have to zoom in for a tiny bit. Uh, let's get the eave on the rear, rakes on the left side, ridge. You can label them in any order. I typically do this as I see it. Uh, then we go into valleys and get the two valleys. And the last little line here that we have to get is a tiny little rake on this extension on the front. So we'll get that. All right. Oh, found one more. Little guy. Little tiny wall <laughs> flashing right there. So just keep a lookout for any yellow lines once you get to the tail end of labeling up your lines. Uh, anything that's yellow, of course, you want to go in and make sure you put a line label on. Katrina, how'd I do? Great. Looks good. Thanks.